What's up everybody, Jay Barino here, continuing StarCraft Mass Recall, a StarCraft Brood War remake in StarCraft 2. We are heading into the fall, we finished up Overmind, I had a little bit of trouble with some of those missions, did very well on the finale though. A good way to, to, to close that off, serving the Overmind. Alright, the fall, let's get started. Very exciting, though, Protoss. Protoss is a challenging race in StarCraft 1, you have to be very, very efficient per unit. You really have to use every unit to, to its fullest, especially as you get towards the end of the campaign. First strike, Citadel of the new Protoss Executor, two days after the Zerg invasion. The new Protoss Executor, I suppose we're the new Executor because Tassadar has been uh, disowned, basically. The Zerg Overmind has succeeded in invading the Protoss homeworld of Ire, and has embedded itself into the crust of the planet. Now, as the agents of the Sinister Overmind spread chaos and destruction across the face of Ire, the stalwart Protoss defenders prepare themselves for the coming onslaught. Antaro Adun, Executor. I am Judicator Aldaris. I have been sent by the Conclave to serve and counsel you. The former Executor, Tassadar, was commanded to halt the Zerg progress in the Terran Sector by burning the infested human worlds. Unfortunately, he disregarded his orders and attempted to destroy the Zerg while sparing the Terrans from the flame. Clearly, Tassadar has failed us. You must not. The Conclave has dictated that our first priority is to strengthen our defenses. You must reinforce our outpost in Antioch and make certain that the province does not fall to the Zerg. Your old comrade, Praetor Phoenix, will meet you there and assist you in this endeavor. Meet Phoenix and Antioch, destroy the Zerg base. Phoenix must survive. A new campaign, a fresh start. Province of Antioch, Ire. That's a cool way to start. Really interesting cinematic. My mouse is off the screen. Woohoo! Information archived. Character profile Alderis. All right, you can go ahead and pause the video and read that if you'd like. Alderis is a very interesting character over the course of the entire game. Well, starting now, I should say, including into Brood War. Alrighty, so let's go. Our zealots are very slow. I'm gonna go ahead and hotkey my dragoons to two so that I can move them constantly, move them back so that they don't get ahead. I don't want my dragoons surrounded by by uh, zerglings. That would be a mistake. This mission can be surprisingly challenging because the Zerg base is very hard to break into once you get to Antioch. So you do have to build up a large force, probably larger than you would expect. Probably much larger than you would expect, honestly. Okay, so let's try to keep all these units alive as we make our way there. So like we can back up a little bit here. We're gonna take a little bit of health damage. I tend to call it hull damage because, I mean, it's, it's health, hull, whatever have you, especially if it's a machine, it's hull. If it's a zealot, it's health. All right, let's go. I think there's some mutalisks along the way here, too. Getting stuck on this bridge a little bit. Very reminiscent of old school StarCraft 1, just to remind you how shitty the Dragoons were in terms of pathing and size. I actually like these Dragoons a little bit more than... Well, okay, for, for the instance of Mass Recall, I like these Dragoons more than the Legacy of the Void Dragoons. I think that these legitimately look like Dragoons from StarCraft 1. They were big, they were bulky, they were fast, but they were just huge. Whereas the, uh, the Legacy of the Void model is a little bit more compact, so that's why I, I didn't really think it was as good of a fit. Uh, we will be seeing the Legacy of the Void Dragoons later on in this playthrough. I don't want to give away, but you could probably guess. Ah, Executor, Entaro Adun. It is good to see you once more upon the field of battle. I feared we would be left to protect the province with no reinforcements. I should not have questioned the Conclave's judgments so hastily. 
sure. Whatever you say, Phoenix. I think we're gonna get some. Alas, all of our probes were lost in the last Zerg attack, and we had no resources with which to replace them. All right, so we're gonna get those set back up. Now we've got a character profile for Phoenix. Again, go ahead and uh, read that if you'd like. Pause the video. And let's continue. Ah, old school Protoss music I like. So Phoenix is awesome. He's very, very, very powerful. 240 shields and health, base 2 armor, 20 damage times 2. intended to construct photon cannons here for defense, but without probes we could not do so. I was trying to hit P for, uh, for Pylon as if I was playing StarCraft 1. Alright, let's check this. Just little notes for how to play Protoss. I don't think we really need to read those. If for whatever bizarre reason you're here and you're watching this and you've never played StarCraft, that's not really bizarre. Maybe maybe that's it's very possible you're one of those people. You just, hey, what's StarCraft 1? I don't know. Let's check out this Mass Recall playthrough by Jay Barino. I will tell you, Protoss, you play, you need these pylons to power your buildings, and that's also your supply structure. So that is pretty much all you need to know there. Uh, the only issue with Phoenix on this map, and Phoenix is awesome, sure, but he's he has the Zealot leg upgrades by default, so he's uh, three... 3.2 movement speed compared to 2.2. He, if you want to bring him to attack, he's always going to run faster and ahead of your other units and uh, just sort of get smoked. So I'm going to go ahead and start plus one right away. In StarCraft 1, Protoss upgrades are expensive and absolutely worth it. The whole idea is Terran, in terms of efficiency, like we talked about at the end of the last uh, mission, Protoss efficiency is meant to be the highest. You're supposed to have the most utility per unit as Protoss, and because of that, your upgrades affect your units to a bit of a higher degree than the other two races. Now, uh, that's definitely up for debate. It depends on it depends on how you play the races. You can make a ton of Zealots and Dragoons, and just flood enemy bases and play them kind of like Zerg. You just get a ton of gateways and you you just flood. Zealots, and you could smash through enemy bases, sure. But in missions like this, where we don't have a lot of money, uh, and we have to be very, very careful because the Zerg base is pretty large, and the Zerg attacks are going to be pretty large, that uh, we have to do what we can with our existing units. So I'll probably end up making mostly Dragoons. I think they're they're the most cost-efficient Tier 1 slash Tier 1.5 unit. Okay, and then let's go ahead and start saturating our gas. If we want to be getting Dragoons, we need to saturate this gas. I'm just going to keep getting probes. And I'm comfortable with my existing units to defend. Oh, these are large attacks. Holy shit. Okay. I take it back. I'm gonna definitely need some cannons. Although we too have marched across hundreds of worlds together, I never imagined that we would be fighting on Aya. The Zerg are indeed worthy foes. So the hundreds of worlds together, um, there's actually some deleted dialogue that I believe has been added back into the game. I don't think it was there when I played in version 5, so... Uh, he actually he actually makes some comments about that. Um, pretty much with every with each Zerg attack, I think they included some of that dialogue, which is pretty neat. So I'm gonna try to get some cannons set up. Cannons are expensive and very fragile. So the idea is we want to make cannons probably back here as opposed to here. We want my zealots taking the damage. I'd almost rather zealots die than cannons die. Zealots are cheaper to replace, and they are mildly more hardy because they've got the plus one base armor. Uh, cannons are just more expensive and they just, they go down really fast. Really fast. Um, I can actually put a pile on here and this is going to wall the cannon off as we get, we can get two more. And the, the power source may actually reach up to the top and we can set up some cannons up here. Uh, you weren't, oh no, it doesn't reach uphill. Okay, that makes sense. Well, we'll see when this one finishes to be sure. Uh, you couldn't build up on these upraised ledges in StarCraft One, but I'll do it if I'm I'll do it if I'm able to now. I'm really not afraid to just to just go for it. We just need more probes. Plus one is just about done. Let's get a cybernetics core here is fine, so we can start getting more dragoons. Okay, let's double check and let's start armor. Actually, this doesn't matter because I I don't have enough money to make anything right now. The faster I can get those plus one upgrades, the better. Yeah, we can't build up here. Okay, that's actually nice that they changed that. So it seems a little more accurate. All right, let's get ready to go in on top of these. Lots of uh, mutalisks as well. We, as you can see, how fast the uh, how fast that cannon goes down just to three mutalisks. So that's why we're gonna need a pretty decently sized group of cannons. This mission is challenging. It, it, there's the enemy attacks are large. They're very large, and if we I could either dump money into getting more gateways, or I can just set up more and more and more cannons. And I might just stack my Dragoons up on the high ground. In fact, that's definitely what I'm going to do. 
so that way I can I can have vision on the mutalisks as they're coming in. And uh, the problem is the the hydralisks can shoot uphill. Let's just go ahead and put these guys on hold position. Hotkey my gateways. We can't turn those into warp gates. No warp gates. No no no. No siree. No warp gates. Unfortunately. Though some would say warp gates fundamentally changed Protoss from StarCraft 1 to StarCraft 2. That's probably one of the largest changes between and uh, sort of re really, really changed the race overall. So now that we don't have those, you have to really think about your production structures a bit more uh, and in the campaign at least. So let's just wait. Uh, probably just going to get a bunch more zealots. I think actually we don't we don't want to put these too close to the edge. I'm going to spread these out. This is really, really anal of me to do. But I'm just going to go ahead and spread these out like this, because as the Hydralists come in, they're going to be able to shoot uphill and attack my Dragoon, so I have to be a little careful. This amount of uh, Photon Cannon should be fine. 20 damage on Photon Cannons is nice. So, Dragoons are actually pretty good against Hydralists. They do 22 damage. Oh no, that's against large. So they do very good against Ultralisks and really large units. 16.5 against Hydralisks, only 11 versus Zerglings, so that's why... It's important to have zealots alongside your dragoons. You don't want to necessarily just go complete. You don't want to necessarily just go completely. Uh, compl uh, just completely dragoons. You want to probably mostly dragoons with some zealots. Very similar to stalker zealot. You want to mostly stalker, some zealot. Uh, if you're doing that composition, obviously you're going to have some spellcasting units to support heavier robo units. But in, we're in mission one. So that's not really an option. Okay, more pylons. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, looking good. Go ahead and lay those down. I went ahead and queued up shields, and now we're just going to get more and more zealots. Phoenix, uh, honestly, until his shields get low, I don't really care. Uh, we can't get shield batteries. I think we can make shield batteries at the start of the next mission. At the least, we can definitely get them in mission three. I remember mission three of this campaign was abnormally challenging. Like, it was really, really hard comparatively to the Mission 3s of all the other campaigns. I, re I just remember having a, a big problem with it. Could probably get some more gateways. I think I'll get two more gateways. I don't care. Let's do it. As long as our units aren't spawning and getting stuck, which I think they'll be okay. Get one more pylon now that we've got some money. There's another base to take. I think this is just gas, but there's another base. Like, if you, you can clear out a bunch of colonies up here and take, a like, a forward base... I'm probably not going to do that. I'm just going to make a bunch of Zealots and Dragoons. Now that we've got our other gateways finishing, though, we should be in better shape. I may even just back these up. I just want one Dragoon on the ramp so that we can see... So that we can see the uh, the Mutalisks as they're coming in. So this should be fine. This poor guy's already a bit low. All right. Using Dragoons is strange. When you think about it, what is a Dragoon? It's, it's, a, it's a Zealot who was fucked up in battle and then put inside of a dragoon and then i think isn't the lure where zealots have little teleportation devices so that when they when they take a, a fatal blow they teleport back to wherever wherever their base is typically many would say oh they teleport back to ire but you know after the end of this campaign it's not so when it's a dragoon not only have they already been terribly wounded they're uh they're like permanently getting killed when the Dragoon goes down. Unless I'm misunderstanding, unless the, the, you know, the warrior inside the Dragoon is also teleporting out or something. But can you imagine you're just getting like continuously wounded over and over and over again? What a, what a nightmarish battle existence that would be. But I mean, it's, it's the Protoss. They're overly superstitious and uh, full of ego and they're very battle-centric culture, I suppose. So, all right, so more Dragoons. The Protoss, in my opinion, I, I would say they're the most interesting race. I think they're they're neat. Um, I like how, again, they're they're very very superstitious and just sort of stupid. Uh, the Terran I kind of find to be more interesting. There's a lot more machinations going on with the Terran, especially when the UED get involved in this. You know the history of it. Oh, this is cool. There's little defensive cans on the outside there. Of course, aren't going to help us but they're just neat little doodads. Okay, so I, I think I have about as much as I would need. I'm going to wait for the next major attack. Hey, Phoenix hasn't been saying those lines that I was saying that he was going to have. <laughs> I lied to everybody. All right, let's get one more. What do we have coming out here? More Dragoons. So let's wait for these. It's possible he only starts saying that stuff when we attack the Zerg. I thought he would, I thought he would say it when uh, the Zerg were attacking us, but I guess not. Good amount of Zealots, though. Uh, Phoenix has taken a little bit of damage. Again, I'm going to wait for the next round of units, and then I'm going to go and attack nine Dragoons. We're going to have 
four more. Might even get another batch of them when I have the opportunity to. Very good. And then if we can keep some of these zealots alive. Now, the big key, especially when you have zealots, is you you don't want them to just run in and die. Very similar to fire bats. You want to kind of keep the zealots close to your dragoons. You don't want them just running up and immediately dying. Because they will. They'll run up and immediately die. And it kind of defeats the purpose of having them. Because they're, I would view them there to protect your dragoons from Zergling surrounds. They're not there to just run in and do all the damage. But anyway, like I was saying, let's go ahead and attack. This hopefully is enough. I don't think we can get a citadel. I didn't even look. No, no citadel, so we can't get uh, zealot legs or anything like that. I will bring Phoenix, but we'll, we'll have him bring up the rear. So like I was saying, there is a base up here, and I think if you want to finish this map, you have to... Uh, you have to destroy the, the buildings anyway, so... Alright, let's see if we can hopefully keep this Dragoon alive. Alright, this is going well. Let's back up here, like I was saying. Don't let these uh, zealots get too far up in the front. Just as we shall overcome our foes today. Oh, I wish Tassadar could be here with us. Right, so he's just kind of describing how we all used to be buds. Tassadar, Phoenix, and whoever we are. I don't think we're Solendus. I think Solendus is... Oh, no, we're Artanis. Uh, we're technically Artanis right now, which is pretty cool. And I think Solendus is the executor you play as in Enslavers 2. I... I don't think it's confirmed that Solendus is the executor in Brood War. But I th I, it's kind of a, a neat assumption to make. So that wasn't too bad. There's a lot of colonies there. If I would have let my Zealots run in, they would have had some trouble. But because we consolidated and ran in together with the Dragoons, we're in really good shape. Alright, so yeah, this is the, the kills, deaths, and survival rate you can expect as Protoss. If you play them, I think, as, as intended. Alright, that went very well. I don't think there's a cutscene yet. It's after... It's after the second mission, actually, but let's go back and check. All right, good start to the Protoss campaign. Maybe a little bit of overkill. I remember that mission being tough. There were a lot of colonies in the base, but took my time and, and did just fine. Alrighty, this has been Jay Barino. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye now.